uh, upcoming discussion. So how to create a particular data structure, how to insert a data into it, how to access the data, how to update the data, how to remove the data or delete the data structure. So these are the common things that we're going to perform or can we perform any other operations directly by calling certain functions, built-in functions. So these are the different things that we're going to, different aspects that we're going to look at for uh, these four data structures. Right. So let's start with lists. So lists are most commonly used data structure here. And think of it as a sequence of data that is enclosed in a square bracket and data are separated by a comma. And each of these data can be accessed by calling its index value. So list items are ordered, changeable, and they allow duplicate values. Okay. List items are indexed. It means the first item has index of zero, the second item has index of one, and so forth. Right. So this is how we can declare a list in Python. Right. If you see this, list can be declared by just equating a variable to a square bracket or by calling a list function so suppose if i want to create a list a so i can just empty list i can just assign it assign this variable to a square bracket and if you if i execute this you can see that it has created uh, a list data structure similarly you can also call a list method right and create a function right both the ways you can create a list right you can declare a list right this is how you can create a list so once it is created how can i mean if you want to create a list with some variables like for example if i want to create a list with some um, one two something like that you can create a list by like this also it directly assigns the variables to it you can directly print it and see what is there in this so these are the elements in the list this is how you can create a list or declare a list right so one can directly assign the sequence of data to a list x like as shown here like for example if i want to create a list x Right, with two um, uh, with the, uh, with two elements, apple and orange. Right, so I can create a list something like this directly. I can assign uh, the elements within the square bracket separated by commas. So this is one element, right, and it is separated by comma. There is another element. Both of them are separated by comma. Right. So this is how you can create a list. You can directly assign a sequence of data to the list. As shown here so if i print this as you can see here this is a list so you can also create a nested list nested list is a list of this right like for example here x is there let me create another list y equal to some uh, let's say or right. i'm just printing y and I'm creating a, another list which contain both X and Y, right? I'm just creating another list that equal into X comma Y, where X is one list, Y is an, another list. So there is a list of lists. I'll also print Z. Okay, as you can see here, so this is Y and this is Z. Z is a list of lists. It has a list of X X is apple and orange, list of apple or apple and orange, and Y is list of this papaya and kiwi. Right. So this is how you can create nested list. So you can create list, you can create nested list list also. Right. So a list can be of any type, any type, like it can be a numerical, it can be string, it can be a billion values. So there are different lists and it can be a combination of all these different data types, right? So let me create a different data sets. I mean, we have already created a list of strings as you can see here, right? So papaya, kiwi are all the things. This is a list of strings. X and Y are list of strings. So I need not create another um, list with a list of strings, right? Let me create a different 
uh, with a different data type like integer like so i can create like one two three four five right so i can create a list like l2 is equal into some boolean type and uh, true um, false true right so i can create something like this okay so i can also create a list with different data types like i can create i can have one element as a string uh like abc another element one two three like that and i can add another element to false something like that so i can have a list of heterogeneous data types let me print all this See? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So this is how we can create a trigger. Some noise is coming. Please mute yourself. Right. Yeah. So this is how we can create list. Yeah, Doctor Doctor Rao. Yes. I interrupt you. Some voice is coming. In, I think from your house. Some construction work is going on. Oh yeah, probably. Let me. Uh, is it disturbing too much? If it is, no, so I'll close all the doors. No, I think if it some, is okay. I can. Some construction work is going on in in your house. Not in my house. Uh, in my neighbor house. Okay, adjoining. So okay. no issue. Uh, please continue. All right. I think it's fine now. They've stopped it. Probably. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is how you can create list or nested list or heterogeneous list or more homogeneous list or list with different data types. So once the list is created, the data structure is created. How do we access the elements of this data structure? Elements of this list is the question. So there are different ways that we can give me a second. Sorry about that. So, how do we access the elements of this uh, list? Okay. Uh, so, the different ways that one can access, one can index through this elements of the list. Okay. So, there is a forward indexing, like you start with 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, and you can access the elements of the list. Like, for example, see, uh, let me print one of the list and then I'll try to access. Um, L3. Okay, this is the list. Suppose if I want to access a particular element, the first element, very first element, so I can access like pin of L3 of 0. So L3 of 0 is indexing to the very first element of the list. Right. So if I want to access this one, I can access index it with 1, index it with 2, three and so on right so this is how we can access see when i print just l3 of zero it is just printing the very fast element of this list see hey so this is forward indexing i can index l3 of zero l3 of one and so on l3 of n minus one if you have n elements in the list you can also uh, access it with the reverse indexing reverse indexing means naked uh, uh, let me show you that Suppose if I print L3 of minus 1, right? So the negative indexing means you're starting with the very last element in the list. So minus 1 means the very last index of the list. So if I print this, you can see it has printed the last element of this list. Similarly, if I print minus 2, then it would print the last but 1. Minus 3, right? third one from the last, minus four, fourth one from the last. 
right so like that you can access the uh, list in a um, in using the negative indexing also right So here, if we see, we can also have the nested indexing. For example, I, I can have a list with nested list. I mean, a list of lists that is nested list. That is, example for this is Z, isn't it? So let me print Z and try to access the elements of this nested list. Okay. So this is uh, the list, uh, nested list, example that we have for the nested list. So when I access a particular uh, index of this Z, for example, if I access Z of zero, it means that it is the it is accessing the first element of the outer list, right? So what is the first element of the outer list? The first list, which means this, isn't it? So it would access this the first um, list of the outer list, right? So so this is. Suppose if I want to access a particular element in the inner list, like for example, if I want to access this apple, right? So which is the list of list, the very first element in the first list of the list, right? So I can just access it using print of z of zero. And then again, in that list, I want to access the zero element. So this is the very similar to the way we access the two-dimensional arrays. Right. So this is how you can access the nested list. Right. So if you want to access a specific element, this is how you can access using indexing. Either you can use forward indexing or reverse indexing, or if it is a list, uh, I mean list of lists, you can use nested index. Right. So, so indexing was only limited to accessing a single element. If you observe all these three cases, we are trying to access a single element or a single list. Right. And slicing, on the other hand, is accessing a sequence of data inside the list. Suppose if you want to access some sequence of elements, not just one element, right? Some subset, which is a sequence of elements, not just our particular element. Right. So then the slicing is very much useful. So in other words, slicing the list, you are taking a slice of the list, one particular slice of the list. So slicing is done by defining the index values of the first element and the last element from the parent list that is required in the sliced list. It means what? So you are defining a particular range. You want to slice from the list. Right. For example, I may want to access from one to five. Right. The elements one to five. Or I may indexes. I mean to say indexes one to five. I may want to access two to six. I may want to access three to nine. So like this, the slice you want to pick up from the list. Right. So am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, I think my Bluetooth is disconnected. Just give me a second. All right, 
So I hope I'm audible right now also. Yes, sir. So slicing is done by defining the index values of the first element and the last element from the parent list. Right. So it is written like this: parent list of A is to B. Right. Where A and B are the index values from the parent list. Okay. So if A and B are not defined, then the index value is considered to be the first value for A. If A is not defined and the last value for B, when the when the B is not defined. So suppose. So let me just pick up one of this list. Um, which list should I pick up? Let me pick up list one. So I'll just print you list. Uh, I mean, I'll just print list one just for uh, the reference. Okay. So print L one. Okay. Right. So this is the list, right? Suppose if I want to access a particular range, right? So print of L one uh, of uh, let's say one is to four, right? So, so what are the elements that it is picking up? It is starting with index one, and till three it is continuing. One, two, three indices. One, two, three indices means two, three, four are the values. We start with this, the uh, one, and ends with four minus one. That is three, right? So this is how you can access a range of values, right? So suppose if you don't pass any value. In the place of four here, right? For example, if you just print like this, print of, I mean, if you just access something like this, print of L one of uh, one is two. That's all. Suppose if you don't fill anything here, if you leave this empty, right? So the upper uh, range you have not given, upper limit you have not given anything there. Then it access till the end, right? Like this. So till the end, it is accessing. Suppose if you don't pass anything in place of zero, right? So then, it starts from the beginning. Right? And you can also slice a list with a fixed length or step length. Right. So you need not uh, slice with the sequence in the sequence only, like two, three, four, five. You can uh, access it with some step size also. Right. So how do we do that? Let me show you that. Print of um, L one of one is to four. So you want to start from, let, let's say, 0 to 0 to 4, I mean, 4 minus 1, 3, and uh, with a step size of 2, not 1, right? So, and then it just access this 1 and 3, as you can see there. So, it is taking a step of 2, right? Suppose if you give a step of 3, then it only access 3, right? All right. So, so far we have seen how to create list, how to access the list, how to access a single element in the list, and how to access the multiple elements in the list in a sequence. Right. So that's what we have seen. So now the question is how to change the list elements. Right. So how do we change the list elements? So let us take a particular list and try to change them. Let's take this L1 only. Right. Suppose if I want to change a particular element, suppose if I want to change the 3 to some 6. Right. So then I can just access this L1 of 2 is equal to 6. OK. What happened? OK, let me print that. Okay. So why is it? 
you might have a doubt, got a doubt now can anyone raise that any doubt so far any doubt so far i have a doubt here so i have printed l1 before updation and i have printed l1 after the updation right so both of them gave the updated list why is it so sir because we have changed the original list we have modified the original but i have printed before uh, the updation itself why is it not printing that because see usually in any of this printing uh, kind of things What what happens is that it buffers the um, buffers the data, and if the buffer um, if the buffer size, I mean, if the size of this data is uh, exceeding the buffer size, then only it flushes out to the output. If it is not exceeding, then it keeps in the buffer itself and then flushes out finally. Right. So here, here because here it is not exceeding the buffer size, it is still in the buffer itself. and then finally at a time it is flushing out to the output so that is why we are getting the updated value at the both the places so you can add something like slash in to get the uh, i mean to flush out um, i mean forcefully to the console right so that's the reason why you have got both when the updated list at both the places here right so suppose so this is how you can update a particular item right suppose if i want to update a uh, range of items right like for example i want to change um, this uh, first and second index items right so how do i change that so i can do this by calling l1 of say for example first and second right one is to 3 so this is equal into um, i have to pass a list right uh, let's say some 7 and 8 right Right, so you can see that right, both the items are changed. Two and six are changed to seven and eight. So you can change the range of items also like this. Suppose if the range is less than the number of items. So suppose here two items you are passing, but in the range you have given only one item. One is to two means only one range, right? So then, what is happening here? Sorry. let me not confuse okay so let me just print you this 176845 okay so now i'm executing this uh, let's say so 11 Right. Sorry. Right. If the range is less than that, it automatically inserts that and shifts the other elements towards the right. 
right so this is the updated list now right uh, so this is the list suppose if the range is greater than the number of items suppose instead of passing uh, i mean two elements i'm supposed to pass let's say i passed uh, four elements three elements range for two elements right so what would happen so this is the updated list 11166 is the updated list i'm executing it now right so what happened it just takes the uh, required range and ignores the rest of the things right. so this is how you can change a particular item or the range of the items i'm just giving the actual thing right so you can also insert the elements into the list right so let me uh, print you the updated list just for the clarity print of l1 okay so this is the list so suppose if i want to insert a particular element to it so i have to specify the position where i want to insert and the element that i want to insert right so suppose if i want to insert particular element so i'll just call insert function l1 dot insert to which index that i want to insert let's say uh, i want to insert at the second index and what is the element that i want to index let's say 2 i want to insert 2 right so let me just print the updated one right so two two because i have inserted it twice i have executed this twice that's why two two so you've got right if i execute it another time you've got another two another two right so this is how it is inserting so it is just inserting an element at a particular position and shifting the other elements towards the right side Right. So this is how you can insert elements at a particular position. You can uh, uh, change, I mean, change an a particular item or the range of the items. Right. Suppose if you want to add element to the list. Right. So this is the list. Just let me. I mean, I just take L1 equal. I'm just overriding this. One comma two comma three comma four. Okay, so this is my list. Print of L1. So this is my list. Suppose if I want to append a particular element to it, right? So I can just call L1 dot append of 5. Okay, and let me print this updated list. Right, so you can see that, right? It is appended at the end of the list. Okay, suppose if I want to append a list to it. Okay, so not just one element, some range of elements, some set of elements. Right, so suppose if I do this, what would happen? I sorry six seven eight. Hey, what happened? It is not appending as the element, it is appending as the list, as you can see here. Right. So what am I supposed to do if I want to append the list of the elements as the elements in the primary list? Like for example, if I want to append six, seven, eight to this list of elements, so I make the list as one, two, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what am I supposed to do? So definitely this is not the way that we can do that, isn't it? Right. So for that, you have a method called extend.
So you can call L1 dot extent of this six comma seven comma eight. Okay. So then you can just print this. You can see that now, right? So it is appended as six, seven, eight individual elements to one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Also, you can insert an element at a particular location by passing. We have already seen this. So you can insert to at a particular location. So what it does, it, it inserts uh, at a particular location, right? For example, I if I want to insert to uh, uh, at uh, third position, right? So uh, so L one dot insert of two comma two right so i want to insert it at the third position here zero one two right so that is why two i have given here so let me print this right so what it is doing it is inserting and moving the other elements towards the shifting the other elements to the right Right, so it means that it is not replacing the item. So not replacing the element at the second location. It is inserting and the other elements are moving towards the right side, shifting to the right side. So suppose if I wanna replace a particular element, I just don't wanna insert, I just wanna replace an element. So what, what should I do? Right, suppose if I wanna replace this two with nine, so you can just access that index and replace it. L1 of 2 is equal to 9. Right. So, so let me print that. Sorry, not print 9, print L1. Okay. So it is replaced, not just inserted. Right. So this is how you can append or extend or insert elements to the list. So, so far we have seen how to create a list, how to access the list, how to add elements to the list, how to uh, insert or extend the list, right? Now, how to delete elements from the list, right? So there are different ways that you can delete elements from the list. Depending on your requirement, you can use any of these functions or any of these ways. Right, so let, let me take this. Um, right, suppose if I wanna uh, delete the last element, then I can call pop function on this list, l1 dot pop. Okay, so, and I'm just printing this um, l1, you can see that. So it is, it has deleted this last element, right? So we have just uh, one, two, three, right? Suppose if I wanna delete a particular element, okay, particular index element at a particular index, Right. For example, I want to remove three. So it is a, it is at index two. So I can pass an index to this pop. Right. Now you can see that we have removed three. So the element at index two, that is three we have removed, and the rest of the list is this one, two, four. Right. Okay. So similarly, I can use another uh, keyword delete to remove these elements. And let me take again, take the same thing here. Suppose if I wanna delete this uh, L1 of two, okay. And I'm just printing this list now. You can see that that element is removed. You can even remove the whole list, right? So the list is not there. So it has deleted the whole list, right? So it is throwing an error print on this, right? Because it's not there. 
right so if you don't want to delete if you just want to delete all the elements and keep it keep the structure as it is there right so then you can use a clear function right so i can just call clear l1 dot clear and i'm just printing it now you can see it is printing an empty list so it is just clearing all the elements it is not removing the list okay right so so far the l the methods that we have seen the index uh, i mean they are using the index uh, to remove the elements right suppose if you want to delete the elements with using by specifying the element itself right so then you can use a remove function right so for example uh, let me execute this so that i have so now our list has now 1 2 3 4 suppose i want to remove two l1 dot remove of two right i'm just printing that you can see that two is removed right so now i have only 1 3 4 so suppose if you want to remove element by specifying an event itself you can use a remove function to do that right so these are the different uh, i mean this is how we can delete the list items so you can so far we have seen how to insert how to update how to delete right so there are some built in functions in the list right built in functions are i mean there are many i have specified few here length is used to get to obtain the length of a list right for example let me call len on um this l1 okay so you can see that right len has three elements as you can see here 1 3 4 so the length of l1 is l1 suppose if i uh, call min on this so it returns a, a minimum value out of the list so which is 1 suppose if i call max on this right so it returns a maximum element out of the list which is 4 right and the count is used to count the number of a particular element that is present in the list suppose let me define l1 as this suppose if i define l1 equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 1 comma 4 comma 5 comma 1 Right, and I just call l1 dot count of one. So how many ones are there in l1? Three ones are there. So it is just returning that one, two, and three. So three times it is repeated. So that is why it is returning an answer of three. Right, right. So. and if i just pass to it it will return one right i can reverse the list by calling a reverse function l1 dot reverse right let me print l1 now oh it may reverse twice so it is again reversed okay so now you can see So it is the reverse of this list one two three one four five one, right? Right. You can also sort the list by calling the sort function. So l one dot sort, and let me print l one. So you can see that right? It is sorted in the ascending order. Suppose if you want to sort it in a descending order, right? uh you can make this usually the reverse is by default it is false so if you want to sort it in a reverse order you make this true right so this is sorted in the reverse order as you can see there right uh so similarity for 
list containing string elements sort would sort the elements based on its ascii values in ascending order and by specifying reverse equal to true in the descending order so you can sort the strings also like for example let's say l2 equal into some uh, a b a a b c and z let's say so this is the list i have and if i want to sort this l2 dot sort and print this it you can see that right it is sorted according to the ascii values suppose if you want to sort based on the length right so you can specify the uh, option is key equal to length to sort them based on the length right so it is now sorted based on the length suppose if you want to uh, do the uh, i mean sorting in the reverse order then you can pass another one that is reverse equal to true and so the according to key length it is sorted in the reverse order descending order right right then copying a list so most of the new python programmers commit a mistake here right uh, when copying a list so consider the following uh, list assignment that means list a is this 2143 and i'm just printing this list here and this is the assignment that i'm making i'm copying list a to list b right so this is list a which is 2143 and this list is copied to list b by assigning list b equal to list a hey right. right so you can see that right so both the list i have printed both list a and list b both of them are same Okay, so now let's perform some random operation on list A. So I'm just popping one element and appending another element. I'm just removing one element, the last element, and appending nine in place of that. Okay, so let me print the updated list here. Okay, so you can see the updated list, right? Two, one, four, nine. so now i made changes in list a so now let me see um the so list b also whether it is affected or not so it shouldn't be affected right if i just copy but if you see list b is also updated right why is it because we are just assigning the memory to list b we are just um because we have assigned the same memory space to both list a and list b so how do we fix this so both in case if you assign list b equal to list a both of them are referring to the same memory because they are referring to the same memory even if you make changes to one of this list the other one will also be changed right so that's the problem so how do we fix this problem so if you recall in slicing we had seen that parent list a is to be returns a list from parent list with a start index a and in end index b minus 1 uh, and if a and b is not mentioned then by default it consider the first and last elements so if you don't mention both the elements a and b so it consider it starts from the beginning with a starting index 0 and it ends with the last index Okay, right. so by doing this, you can assign a list of elements to another list. This is how you can copy. Now, suppose if list A is equivalent to, let's say, one, two, three, four, right, okay. and I just copy list B of um, list B is equivalent to. list a of colon it means all the elements in list a right 
so let me print both list a and list b right so both of them are same now let me try to make some changes to list a list a dot pop i'm just removing one element right so now let me print both of them again you can see that right b is not affected now only one element is removed from a right so b is not affecting through this so this is how you can copy a list so don't directly assign like this as it, as it is shown here right Right. So we have already checked it. You can concatenate two lists by using uh, plus operation. For example, if I just equal into some one comma two comma three uh, plus four comma five comma six, and just print them. Right. So A is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how you can concatenate two different lists. You can also concatenate equal into A plus L3. And let me print that. Right. So L3 is appended here, right? So that's all about lists. So let's move to another data structure, tuples. So tuples are very much similar to lists, but only the big difference is the element inside the list can be changed, but in the tuple, it cannot be changed. You cannot change the tuples, I mean, elements of the tuple, right? So why is it required if it cannot be changed at all? That may be the question running in your mind, right? So why is that we require this at all if it cannot be changed at all? We have a list, we can change it. And you're saying that list is very, tuple is very much uh, similar to the list except for the fact that it cannot be changed, right? So there may be applications where you do not want to change the elements of a particular data structure. It is fixed. You don't want to allow anyone to change it, right? So think of tuples as something which has to be true for a particular value and cannot be true for no other values, right? So let's, for better understanding, let's take a div mod function. What is div mod function? It divides a particular value by a particular value <clears throat> and returns both the dividend and uh, the remainder, right? So here the coefficient has to be three and the remainder has to be Right. If you divide 10 divided by 3, then the coefficient is 3 and the remainder is 1. So these are the values cannot be changed whatsoever when 10 is divided by 3. See, isn't it? So these are the things that we cannot change, isn't it? When you divide 10 by uh, 10 with 3, so the coefficient value is 3 and the remainder is 1. So it cannot be changed, right? Since the div mode returns these values as a tuple, right? not as a list because they cannot be changed so i'm just calling div mode of 10 comma 3 it returns a tuple xyz i'm just printing xyz and type of xyz Can see that right so three and one are written as a tuple okay so, so this is what the tuple is and the, how, why we require this and how to define a tuple is the question now right so you can divide a tuple i mean define a tuple by uh, assigning it to parenthesis or by calling a function called tuple right so earlier in list, if we see, we have used brackets, square brackets. 
but now parentheses we are using to create a tuple so earlier we had called a function list now we are calling a function tuple tuple so equal into right i am just calling this i am printing type of this right you can see that right type of this variable is tuple and similarly i can also create by passing a, by calling a function tuple right i can uh, pass a list to it and make it a tuple right i can just print yeah, you can see that would be a tuple of 1 2 right so if you want to directly declare a tuple it can be done by using a comma at the end of the data like this right you can see that right so it is created as a tuple 27 comma okay so usually when you multiply 27 with 2 what would you get it will yield 54 right 2 times 27 it is equal into 54 but when multiplied with a tuple the data is repeated twice suppose if i multiply this 27 with um uh sorry wait sorry hey right. so it will be repeated twice suppose if i do it for four times so this will be repeated four times if i do it for 10 times this will be repeated 10 times hey okay. all right so values can be assigned while declaring a tuple itself like as is as it is shown here so if you pass a list of array tuple of elements to the tuple function it directly create that tuple right so tuple 3 is equal into tuple of 1 2 3 so if you print this and similarly you can pass a string it creates a tuple of characters right so this has created a tuple of 1 2 3 and this operation has created a tuple of h e l l o okay so it follows the same indexing and slicing as the list so suppose if i want to access a particular element in the tuple like tuple of 0 sorry tuple 3 right tuple 3 so this is one same indexing suppose if i want to access multiple index 1 is to 2 1 is to sorry 1 is to 3 okay right. so it is returning to n 3 so all these indexing operations and slicing operation is same as in the case of list okay right. so all this indexing and slicing is same as in case of the list so here also you can access in the reverse way like suppose if i want to access minus 1 then the last element of this list uh, sorry tuple right so if i access minus 4 to minus 1 then it starting with minus 4 ending with minus 2 right so if i don't specify anything here then till the end it takes hey right. suppose if i don't specify anything at both the places then the whole thing will come hey right. so this is how the indexing and slicing same as in case of the list this is what i wanted to say so unpacking suppose if this is the tuple tuple 3 is the tuple and you want to assign it to some variables a b c So how many elements do I have in tuple three? Three elements: one, two, and three. Suppose if I want to assign this to A, B, C, right? So then you can see that it can be assigned to A, B, C. You can unpack this tuple three and print a big comma C, right? So you have printed A is one, B is two, and three is. Right. So this is how you can unpack the elements of a tuple. Suppose instead of b, suppose if you give asterisk b, right? It means what? 
you are assigning the address of the remaining elements here right so so okay c is not there now you can see that right so the remaining elements are assigned as a list to b if you mention star here okay so this is how you can unpack the elements of a table right so how to add elements to a table okay yeah, sir uh, this is kaushik from good level engineering college okay sir can you please repeat this uh, unpack function sir sure sure so how many elements do we have in tuple 3 three elements right 1 2 3 suppose if i want to unpack this individual elements assign it, them to some individual variables like a b c so you can directly create a variables like a b c and assign the tuple to them so it unpacks the individual elements of tuple 3 and assign them to individual variables that we have passed out here a b c so if i print now a b c So the individual elements it takes at all a equal into one, b equal into two, c is equal into three. Right? Suppose if I just pass a star and give till b only. Right? So it takes the remaining elements as a list and assign them to b here. Right? So the remaining elements after assigning one uh, element to a the remaining elements are 2 and 3 so 2 and 3 are created as a list and assigned to b so is that fine sir kaushik sir uh, yes sir my my another doubt is for example i have uh, four elements sir four elements in the tuple so mm -hmm. if, if we assign the a uh, a comma b uh, star b comma c equal to tuple 3 what will happen sir let's check i'm not tried that but you can you can try what is yeah it is taking to enter your assignment okay. to be all right so adding elements to a tuple right so as initially have mentioned it is not changeable once the tuple is created you cannot change its values so what is the point of adding elements to a tuple because you cannot change it so tuples are unchangeable or immutable as it is um uh, i mean uh, as the as i have mentioned at the very beginning itself but there is a work around so there is some way that you can work it it out so you can convert the tuple into a list and change the list and convert the list back into the tuple so that is how you can uh, add elements to a tuple mm -hmm. right um so so what should i do so let me take some some tuple um p1 equal to tuple of 1 comma 2 comma 3 all right so let me print this Hey, so I have got one tuple. Suppose if I wanna append add element to this tuple, right? So directly I cannot do this. If I if I do this, what would happen? Let me check. Hey, so it is throwing out an error. Okay. Suppose if I want to update a particular element also, it will throw an error. Right, so it is throwing an error because you cannot change the tuple. <coughs> it's already four eight. Okay, right. Let me quickly go. 
so what is the alternative alternative is to convert it into a list okay so let me take another list l temp okay so i'm just converting this tuple as a list I'm passing t1 to the list okay and i'm just appending some element to this list okay by calling the append function right i'm just printing this l temp let me check whether this is okay it is doing good all right so now i have to convert this updated list back to a tuple right so t1 equal into tuple of this l temp right so let me print this t1 now right so now the list is updated you can as you can see right so there is no direct way of changing a tuple but you can do it alternatively is by converting it into a list and making the changes that you want to do and then back to tuple convert back to tuple right you can remove the elements uh, from the tuple in the similar way right so because you cannot change it you can not delete the individual elements of a tuple if you want to delete the whole tuple that's fine but if you want to remove the individual elements of the tuple directly you cannot do that but you can do that by updating i mean by uh, converting that into a list like this right so remove um let's say 3 right so 3 is removed and converted back to tuple as it is shown here right you can remove the whole tuple right by using the delete keyword dl keyword right you can delete the whole tuple t1 and print i'm just printing to show you that it is not exist so it is throwing an error because the tuple is not present right so delete right all right right so you can delete the whole tuple by calling delete function okay and uh, if you call a tuple on the string it will return a tuple of individual characters right that's what we have seen right help me print this d for you for better visualization so this is what it is returning when you call a tuple function on a string okay a tuple of individual characters suppose if i want to count the number of a's from this tuple i can call d dot count of a right so the total three a's this is one two and three right and if you want to print where a is present you can call index of a so when there are multiple characters then it returns the index of the very first one right so the index of the very first a is 1 it is returning that similarly you can also call length of uh, d which returns the length of the uh, tuple you can also call max which returns the maximum value of this d and you can also call min it returns very minimum value of this d which is capital k according to the ascii values it is written hey right. that's all about the tuples hey right. let's go to sets so sets are mainly used to eliminate the repeated numbers in the sequence or the list right so like if you see in the list or tuples the lo the uh, duplicate values right you can uh, have two ones or three ones four ones whatever right so to eliminate the duplicate values we go for the sets so it is also used to perform some standard set operations like union intersection set difference so we have some set operations right so if you are interested and if your application demands that kind of operations then it is better to use the sets data structures and sets are declared as a set function by calling the set function 
which will initialize an empty set. Right? And set of sequence can execute it, declare a set with elements. Right? Like for example, if you see here, set of uh, sets. Uh, set object is not called. Did we use any variable with set? I do not remember. Anyhow, let me. Okay, so let me go here. Right. Right. Right, this is a set, isn't it? So it is returning an empty set. Suppose if you pass some elements, list of elements or a tuple of elements to a set, it creates a set with those elements, right? So you can see that, okay. In another version, I have executed that. So you can see that duplicate elements are removed. Two, two, actually, when we are passing these elements, two is repeated twice, three is repeated twice, but duplicate elements are repeat, uh, removed and the distinct elements are only present in the set, as you can see there. Right, so there are some built-in functions that you can call, uh, like union, intersection and all, to demonstrate that let's create two sets. One set is with one, two, three, and another set is with two, three, four, five. Right, so after that, we're calling a union on this set one union set two right so if i call that set two is appended to set one right and all the duplicate elements are removed if you see two three are duplicate elements because they are there in the both the sets right set one and set two but they are uh, present only once in the resulting set right and you can add uh, elements to this set right uh, so you can add zero and it randomly adds at a particular, I mean, add a particular element and note that index of a newly added element is arbitrary. It can be added anywhere, not necessarily at the beginning or not necessarily at the end. Right. So you can see that add of zero, set add one of zero. So earlier set one is one, two, three. Now the set one is this. 0, 1, 2, 3, because you've added a new element called 0, right? You can also perform the intersection operation by calling set one dot intersection of set two. It, it results, it gives the results of the intersection between these two. So what are the common elements between set one and set two? If you see, the common elements are two and three, right? So the common elements are two and three, and this is giving a, a common uh, a set of elements. And you can also perform the difference operation, set one difference, set two means it will remove all the elements that are present in the set. I mean, the common elements between set one and set two from set one, right? So set one difference set two means that zero, one, two, three from that, because two and three are present in set two, those are removed from set one. Right, so the resultant is zero one. A symmetric defining function outputs a function which can which contains elements that are not that are in one of the sets but not common elements. Right, so two three are the common elements. Remaining elements are zero one four five. Right, so it is giving that. So similarly, you can perform a subset is disjoint a superset to check. If the subset, uh, I mean, if the set one and set two, if set one is a subset of set two, or set one is disjoint with set two, or set two is a superset of set one, to perform those kind of operations, you can you can check with is subset is disjoint is superset, either it can return true or false. Okay, depending on whether it is a subset of set two or not, or superset of set one or not, or disjoint or not. Right. So in this case, because set one is not a subset of set two, it is returning false. And set two is not disjoint with set one because they have some common elements. That is why it is returning false. And set two is not a superset of set one. That is why it is returning false. 
and you can pop can perform pop operation to remove some arbitrary element in the set suppose if you want to remove some element arbitrarily randomly then you can call a pop function on that suppose if you want to remove a particular element specific element from the list so if you see here set1 dot pop so actually we have 0 1 2 3 so it is randomly picking one value and removing that so zero is removed from here it removes an arbitrary element from the set and remove deletes a specific element from the set right so if i just remove two from here it is just printing one and three so you can call a clear function to clear all the elements from the set so it will return an empty set as you can see here set1 dot clear so all the elements are clear and it returns an empty set so that's all about the sets right so you can explore the rest of the things so let's move to the dictionaries so dictionaries are more used like a database because here we use index a particular sequence with your uh, user defined string so to define dictionary equate the variable to either braces or dictionary so in case of list we equate the variable to the square bracket in case of tuples with parentheses here with the curly braces right so to create a dictionary empty dictionary either you can uh, pass it to i mean you can assign an empty uh, braces or you can call it dct function right both the ways it creates um, a dictionary empty dictionary right as you can see here so how do you assign uh, values to here right so as i have told you you can imagine this dictionary like a hash right so i am hoping that most of you are from computer science background even if you are not from computer science background i am hoping that you have an idea about the hash so it has the key value pairs right hash has the key value pairs so the dictionaries are the same more or like it's like a mapping with a key and value pairs right so here this is how you can assign uh, values in the dictionary elements in the dictionary so dictionary works somewhat like a list but with an added capability of assigning its own index styles so here if you see one is taken as a index and one e one one string is taken as a index and uh, the numerical one is taken as a value so this is a key value pair one and one string one is a key and numerical one is a value right so one two is a key string one two is a uh, key and 12 numerical is a value right so this is how we are assigning value state and you can print d0 and this is one this is how it looks like 1 1 1 2 1 right so you can even directly do this suppose if i do this um d1 equal to this right so i'm just printing this right so you can directly do this also you need not uh, always uh, do individual element wise you can uh, assign the whole dictionary of elements at a shot okay right? with a key value pairs so the first half of this uh, is a key and the second half of this is a value and different elements are separated by commas so this is how we create dictionaries so how to assign or oh, how to access this uh, elements of a dictionary so suppose if you want to access this one i have to access with the corresponding key suppose if i want to access this value one so i have to access with the corresponding key so like you can see here key is when you one so i have accessed it with that or you can call a get function on d0 d0 dot get of one this is also this also returns this one so let me print that one and one so both the things are same as you can see here so either you can directly call using the brackets or you can use the get function 
to uh, access the values. Right. So two lists. So list, you can see that this is one list. This is another list. Right. So two lists which are related can be merged to form a dictionary. Right. So by taking one of them as a key, another one as a value. So this can be taken as a key. This can be taken as a value. The other is also possible. So we use zip function to combine two lists and form a couple of these relations. Right. So suppose right. So these two lists are merged together, and this would be looking like uh, one comma one, two comma. Two, three, comma three. List of lists. I mean, tuple of tuple. Sorry. So this would be looking something like this. To convert that to a dictionary, we have to call dish of this D two. So whatever the zip that combining two list, we have to pass that as an argument to this dictionary or uh, DST function and call that, and it returns a dictionary. Right. If I print a one, you can see this. Right. This is a dictionary of the elements from the first list as the keys and elements from the second list as the values. So this is how you can merge two different lists that are relevant, and you can create a dictionary out of it. Right. So you can create a nested dictionary also. Like for example, this is a one, right? For example, if I want to create uh, another uh, dictionary by passing this as a value to that, so a two of zero. Let's say a two is. Let me just create another list, another dictionary, a two empty dictionary, just passing a two of. Um, Let's say digits is equal into this a one, right? And a two of um, uh, let me just take this. What is that? Print of a two, right? So you can see that, right? It is a dictionary of dictionaries. So this is the outer dictionary. Uh, this is the key value at the outer dictionary, and the dictionary itself is passed as a value to it. So how to access this? Suppose if I access a two of digits, what would I get? A two of digits. I would just get this value that I have at that place. So the value is another dictionary. Suppose if I want to access a particular element in this inner dictionary, I can just call another one. Let's say two. So which is printing two, as you can see here. So this is how you can create nested um, nested dictionaries and access the nested dictionaries. And these are some built-in functions. So suppose if I call a one dot clear, it clears all the elements of that, right? A one and prints. Uh, I mean, if I just print this, this would return empty dictionary because it is clearing all the elements, right? I can also create a dictionary by using the loops, right? Like this. I I mean, uh, like this. Right. So the names here are one, two, three, four, five, and numbers here are one, two, three, four, five. So what am I doing? I'm repeating it over loop. I'm just making this as a key value and numbers of i as a value. I'm just printing a one, which is a dictionary of this key value base. Right. Suppose if I just want uh, the values of this uh, individual elements of this dictionary. What are the individual values of this one? Numerical one, numerical two, numerical three, numerical four, numerical five are the values from this dictionary. So if I just want the values, 
I can access them using the values function a1 dot values which is returning 1 2 3 4 5 list so I just want to access keys then a1 dot keys okay so a1 dot items returns a list containing both list but each element is a dictionary is in a inside is a table right so it is some it returns something like this so which is actually uh, same as the results that we have obtained when zip function was used so the same results that we get here when i use zip function so this object right which is the same as this d2 is same as this right and i can remove item uh, by popping it by calling pop and by passing a key value to it if i pass a1 dot pop of 4 so the corresponding element would be removed and the element can be stored here in x so it returns the element that it is removed so the value for 4 key is 4 and that is popped up in x popped and stored in x and i'm just printing x and a1 you can see in the resultant a1 we don't have 4 and and this is the element that is popped out 4 which is x right so how to copy the dictionaries suppose if i assign uh, if i want to copy a1 to a2 so if i assign a2 equivalent to a1 we would get the same problem as we have in uh, as we got in the list so it will refer to the same memory and if i make changes in one of the dictionary the other dictionary will also change right so that's the problem to avoid that what would we do is that we follow two different techniques either you can do this a2 equivalent to a1 copy a1 dot copy or a3 equivalent to dictionary of a1 so it in both the cases uh, it creates a copy of this a1 right so even if i make some changes to a1 now it will not affect a2 right so let us see that a2 equivalent to a1 dot copy and i am making a changes so a1 of uh, uh, so let's say i am changing this 3 sorry i'm changing this 3 to 33 so instead of 3 i'm just giving 33 right so now let me print both a1 and a2 right so you can see this right a2 is not affected by making changes to a1 so only a1 is affected whereas suppose if i don't do this a1 dot copy i directly assign this right so then you can see that if i make changes to a1 a1 a2 is also affecting as you can see here right so similarly suppose instead of this uh, Okay, now anyhow, I will not change. Right. Uh, okay, so suppose A2 of 3, I am making it to 33. I'm just printing A2 and A3. Right. So you can see this, right? By making changes to this, it is not affecting to A3. Okay. Whereas if you directly pass, it will affect. Right. So while copying, please ensure that you are copying by following this one of this procedure, not directly assigning to a variable. All right. That's all. If you have any queries, I'll take. Otherwise, we can close the session. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Happy learning. <laughs>
clearly mentioned but uh, what i i am confused with these all three types data types uh, in this uh, new programming language to me i am new to python programming mm -hmm. so <laughs> uh what is the significance of these three uh, different, different type, type of data of type, type. Uh, because uh, is it not possible to uh, handle a program or algorithms uh, within any of these list or uh, tuple or uh, why these uh, so many the, confusions on the requirement sir for example uh, uh, if your requirement is i mean if you on a um, uh for example like a hash kind of data structure right so and it is better to go for the dictionaries suppose if you want to go for the array kind of uh, uh, data structure then it is better to go for list and if you uh, don't want to change the uh, elements of uh, i mean if your application demands not changing the elements of uh, elements of a list then it is better to go for tuples and if you are working with sets uh, like uh, if you want to perform some kind of union intersection difference kind of operations and you don't want to allow the duplicate values then it is better to go for sets so it's all depends on the requirement that we have depending on the requirement we select the appropriate data structure okay so one thing is clear that uh, only after a good practice uh, yes, i will yes. have some familiarizes yeah, with true. this and yeah. uh, also i hope that in uh, uh, in the next uh, sessions uh, we will require all these uh, type of data types different yeah, data yeah. types yeah uh, yeah when they demonst i mean when they demonstrating uh, the uh, concepts like uh, classification concepts or regression concepts whatever topics you require this I and mean, the uh, data structures that you require you may also require numpy pandas that may be probably demonstrated in the coming sessions yeah sure sure thank you sir thank you very much yeah any other queries you can uh, uh, doctor uh, dr rao sir uh, yes, actually uh, my area is basically civil engineering background okay right ha uh, may i ask one question from civil engineering background uh you can ask but uh, if i know like an answer i'm from computer science <laughs> like this uh, python actually uh, python is a one of the important language uh -huh. pretty much important for prediction point of view especially for this uh, urban planning we are uh, forecasting population especially for uh, proper alignment of water supply and sewerage line mm -hmm. it's also important very much important for prediction of mitigation like uh, this prediction of floods and earthquake cyclones etc mm. in area can be predict uh, this uh, pandemic kind of you can say the disease uh, like a third wave by you can predict it sir uh, but uh, you should have to have some model like for example uh, to model the sequence of uh, sequence of weather like for example if i have a problem like what what would be the weather tomorrow if today is sunny yesterday is, is rainy whether it would be a cloudy or sunny or rainy right okay so to answer this kind of questions we have some models in machine learning like hidden markov models or the uh, rnn i mean the current neural networks so using those models you can and using python you can implement those models and predict for uh, the if you uh, you can forecast whatever that you are asking based on the sequence of uh, information that we have you want to predict the next information isn't it so yes. in the language yeah, so you can definitely model using uh, the sequence modeling techniques like i have mentioned two of them hidden markov models or uh, uh, this uh, recurrent neural networks there are very other, many other uh, sequence modeling techniques you can implement any of them in python if you want then you can definitely answer those questions okay all right and really you have given very good idea actually everyone is appreciating to this doctors and nurses and uh, another uh, police um, police police personals and other people but they are not appreciating during this pandemic time to engineers because no building has been collapsed during this pandemic time no computer has been failed during this computer especially pandemic 
whenever these doctors are using okay no machine no vehicle which is being made by engineers so it is also the matter of appreciation for engineers and motor science engineering as well as from civil engineering during this pandemic time so actually what we have uh, understood that uh, this pandemic is so disaster uh, for the structures structural engineering point of view because uh, people those who are suffering from this pandemic they are directly discharging their you can say urinals and other waste materials through sewerage pipelines if you are not getting it properly uh, purified then what may will be, uh, happen it will may be contaminated to another sewerage line and water supply lines okay and people are directly drinking the water through such contamination and it may also affect the pandemic so such type of you can say the sewerage water treatment plant has been made in many countries okay and uh, there is a great contribution in the field of this pandemic uh, being uh, uh, engineers okay so this is also may be one of the important python is may help for all branch of engineering especially for prediction point of view and and simulation point of view so that we can uh, predict this uh, unforeseen uh, different kind of waves of pandemic okay thank you sir and it is very good presentation i have seen and you have narrated each and every aspect of this uh, uh, python uh, list and tuples and set dictionary okay and one question is also being arise from this uh, uh, dr arpana rawal madam in dictionaries can the key values and values be replaced with expressions and variable place holders what is your view uh, you can use regular expressions for that maybe i don't know whether that would be covered in this uh, or not you can uh, if it is not covered you can refer to the regular expressions for that you can do that yes so what can you comment upon the heterogeneity property of dictionaries will they be accommodating heterogeneous items or nested list or something like that nested dictionaries are there i have already demonstrated that yeah, uh, what about the heterogeneous uh, property uh, will they be accommodating uh, Items yeah, of you different can, types. Yeah, you, you can do that. Uh, any have keys are treated as strings. Values you can. And as per the uh, commands that you had been uh, made us practicing, the tuples as well as list they are homogeneous, right? No, no, list can be heterogeneous. Tuples also can be heterogeneous. Okay. So with this, we have come to the end of uh, day two, last session. have come to the end of day 2 ml so i hold heartily on behalf of pit fraternity dear to the community thank you sir for being with us and that was a wonderful hands on practice session and it was very simple you had made it very simple very easy the the pace in which you had been explaining was uh, very grasping and i guess the participants might have enjoyed and they will be benefiting it in their own research work and other academics Thank you. So over to Patra sir. Next announcements. Uh, thank you, ma'am. So I thank uh, Rao sir for your immense uh, uh, knowledge that you have shared and very valuable programming knowledge that is needed now. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Khare sir, for uh, uh, taking active participation and being very <laughs> active in the entire sessions as. Uh, and i will request all the participants to join tomorrow at 10:30 and we will uh, successfully uh, complete the other sessions also by the grace of god almighty so In thank you all we can ask our audience to uh, gather for a group photo session off and on ha huh. so obviously I will, i will be very thankful to all the participants if they can switch on their videos we can have a group photo good good idea are sir yes 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 sir good afternoon sir good afternoon tiwari ji good afternoon uh, sir main ek vakya bolna chahunga aapne abhi jo bola ki engineers ko koi nahi puch raha hai sir hai na to hum log engineers ko isme hum log sab back end support mein hai sir back end worker ho gaya front end worker actually <laughs> abhi kya hua ek iit ka main seminar attend kar raha tha to yes, wahan ke professor iit rudki ke professor hai उस पे लेक्चर दिए कि सर वो डॉक्टर्स इंजीनियर डॉक्टर्स को तारीफ कर रहे हैं पुलिस को तारीफ कर रहे हैं 
है ना लेकिन कोई भी इंजीनियर कोई भी वाहन खराब नहीं हुआ कोई भी कंप्यूटर डॉक्टर चेक कर रहा था खराब नहीं हुआ कोई बिल्डिंग कोई अस्पताल गिरा नहीं कोई अस्पताल गिरा नहीं कोई कोई पाइप लाइन चौक नहीं हुई है ना पानी की सप्लाई पूरी चलती रही लेकिन किसी ने श्रेय नहीं दिया हवाई जहाज से पूरे ऑक्सीजन टैंक आते रहे लेकिन किसी ने इंजीनियर की तारीफ नहीं किया और सारे लोग श्रेय दे रहे पुलिस वालों को आर्मी वालों को नर्सेस को डॉक्टर को तो इंजीनियर को तो बुरा लगेगा ना भाई सर हुए <laughs> इंटरनेशनल करते हैं उसमें दो व्यक्ति रहते चेयरमैन एंड रिपोर्टर तो जो रिपोर्टियर रहता है वो लास्ट में जो है है भी करता है। वैसा भी अपन लोग करते आएंगे तो अच्छा रहेगा वो हालांकि लास्ट में काम आएगा लेकिन बहुत अच्छा मैडम प्रेजेंटेशन कर रहे हैं और थैंक यू ऑल सो टू मारो अगेन थ्री सेशन मतलब ट्रिपल आईआईटी गांधीनगर बाय डॉक्टर उदित भाटिया जी डॉक्टर नेहरू नितिन बत्रा जी आई आई गांधीनगर एन आई सो वेरी नाइस यू कैन से पदमावती मैडम ने काफ़ी हार्ड वर्क किया है सिलेक्शन में एक्सपर्ट को लाने में और सारी टीम ने बहुत बढ़िया थैंक यू मैडम ओके थैंक यू सो आई विल रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू प्लीज स्विच ऑन देयर वीडियोस सो वी कैन टेक अ ग्रुप फोटो सभी लोग अपना वीडियो ऑन कर लीजिए प्लीज ये परथोराव जी आज ही वीडियो लेना जरूरी है <laughs> मैं तो टी शर्ट ले लेंगे सर एक इन बिटवीन इन बिटवीन चलिए ठीक है ठीक है ओके अब दूसरा फिर लेंगे एक सर सब लोग ठीक है ठीक है ले लीजिए एक बार वीडियो ऑन कर लीजिए मैं एक पिक ले लेता हूं ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच सो विल मीट टुमारो एट टेन थर्टी एम थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू पार्थो सर रावल मैडम खरे सर एंड ऑल फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर लास्ट में जाओगे कोलेश्वर सर हो गया ना